Uh, well, this this week uh, is bad advice is from a listener named at Ol Rickety. Uh, he writes, "Jeremy, I need some advice. There is a really cute girl I work with. We laugh and get along great. So I want to ask her out, but I am not very good at these kinds of things. How would you ask a girl out? And what are some great first date ideas?" Oh, Rickety. Oh, Rickety. First off, uh, there's good things and there's bad things here. Uh, good news is, I want to commend you on the wisdom that you're showing. Dating a coworker, nothing can go wrong here, okay? Great decision, buddy. Uh, also, great decision asking me for advice. Here's the bad news is that you got some work to do here, bud, because it sounds like you've known this girl for a while. And actually, with women, there's. There's a very short time from the time that you meet them to when you can ask them out. Otherwise, they start to think that uh, you're not interested. No doubt this girl thinks you're not interested. And by that, I mean in women. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that she thinks you're gay. I mean, Christ, I just read your letter and I'm kind of 50-50 on it. I've never even met you. You type with a list. That's, that's all I'm saying. So... Luckily, you're not uh, you're not dead in the water. There's something you can do here, and it's it's kind of a process, but uh, just follow this advice, and and it's going to work out for you. First, you have to reestablish that you are straight. Okay, you got to reestablish the hetero here. Uh, do some things that let her know that you're into women. Like uh, start off simple. Like get one of those novelty coffee mugs that looks like boobs. <laughs> Bring that into work. <laughs> Then you kind of step up your game after a few days in the break room. You're reading a Hustler magazine. <laughs> a couple days later, you're eating lunch. You got your sandwich. You make eye contact with her. You peel that bread apart. Just bury your face in it. <laughs> Eat that thing from the inside out. Then, at the same time that this is going on, you want to make sure that she stays available. Because if she's half as good as what you say she is, there's going to be some foxes in that hen house, if you know what I mean. <laughs> If you don't know what I mean, I mean other guys are going to fuck her. <laughs> a lot of guys. <laughs> going to fuck her a lot of times. Some of them maybe at the same time. Oh, they're going to fuck her and they're going to fuck her good. Better than you probably can, which could be fun to watch, but that's not going to help when you go to ask her out. So the best you want to make sure that she stays available. And the best way you can do that is by starting nasty rumors about her. <laughs> Uh, make a fake profile on some social media account and, and let people know. Maybe she shits her pants at movies. <laughs> Maybe uh, she's, she's got that, uh, that fucking case with the earlobes. Uh, Eberfuss. <laughs> Tell them that she's got some, some new strain of STD that'll make their dick fall off as soon as they <laughs> stick it in. And, and it can also be spread maybe with a firm handshake. <laughs> Eventually, this is going to get back to her, though. So make sure you tell people that the number one symptom is vehement denial. <laughs> that way, the more she says she doesn't have it, the more convinced people will be that she does. Now, once you've reestablished that you are straight, you've convinced her and probably yourself that you are straight and you have ruined her life. Now you've got to work on yourself. You got to change your personality. You've got to make yourself out to look like a lunatic. <laughs> Everybody who talks to you, you just fucking snap. You go off on them. You yell at them, scream at them, push them down, backhand them, challenge them to a duel, bring in pistols. <laughs> make sure she sees you do it though. And now you can confidently ask her out because she's going to be way too scared to say no. <laughs> And nobody's going to help her out because they all think she's just some disease scuzz bag. <laughs> now, you've asked her out. Where do you take her? This is going to get a little tricky because at this point, there's really only one place that you can take her. And I don't know what's going on in your area, but you got to take her to a carnival. <laughs> this serves two purposes. One, you've kind of made yourself out to be a little creepy. And uh, creepy is kind of a relative term. <laughs> Yes, next to your coworkers, you're very creepy. But next to that rat face freak who runs the tilt a whirl, <laughs> you're still relatively normal. The other thing is that you don't know everything there is to know about this girl. There's still a lot of information, very important information. And luckily for you, there are people at most carnivals who can guess people's weight. Uh, <laughs> you never know if she's like some secret chubbo that's been wearing Spanx all the time. If that's the case, you don't want to spend any more time and money on her than you have to. 
<laughs> Tell her you're going to the bathroom and then ditch her. <laughs> but if she turns out to, you know, weigh at a correct amount, uh, then you should be golden. And you're going to want to, like, try and casually work it into the conversation that you've heard the rumors. Don't let her know it was you that started it. But you've heard the rumors about her. Say something casual like, hey, I heard you have an awful sexual transmitted disease. <laughs> And that way, later on, when you get her alone in your parents' basement, you come off as sounding caring and compassionate when you tell her you're not going to use a condom. <laughs> Follow that advice, and I guarantee you it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I'll make you this promise that I won't give a shit because you'll be in jail at that point. <laughs> That's my advice. Oh.